Professor Gosch, the numbers of IBD patients, especially at a young age, are rising. How can that be explained? So, IBD in the young age is rising, and this is shown in many parts of the world. I think the most important thing about this is it points to a clear environmental factor. Because of our lifestyle changes, our dietary changes, the way number of processed food and food additives have been brought in has made some of these almost certainly happen. All of these changes, the microbiome in the gut, which is driven by the diet and what we eat. We have just shown in a paper published in Lancet that across the world, IBD is increasing, especially in the young age, but in some of the newly industrialized countries, the increase is the most. And some of the established Western industrialized countries, in the adult population, it has stabilized, but in young population, it is still increasing, which still suggests that if you're susceptible genetically to the disease, many environmental factors are driving the disease to become obvious or apparent. And what can be done to prevent the disease from outbreaking at the moment? So prevention strategies for inflammatory bowel disease is still at its infancy. We do not know enough about what really causes it to try to prevent it. Having said that, it is now clear that the disease actually starts sometimes many years before the symptoms become apparent. So there is a preclinical stage. There are some markers becoming available to identify the preclinical stage. Once we can identify that preclinical stage, it may be possible then to manipulate some of the environmental factors via diet and microbiome to try and prevent the disease. Most of the focus is therefore now on environment, diet, and how it interacts with the bugs in our bowel. So a lot of research goes into the definition of actual biomarkers. Which the definition of biomarkers which predict development of the disease later on. And you um, just hold a session. Uh, you just were in a session. We're just talking about the iconic study, which is the largest ongoing observational study with over uh, 1,800 patients in 33 countries. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what the study is hoping to find? So the main objective of the study was to show the true and real burden of ulcerative colitis across the world because it's a global disease. And why did we do it? We did it because Crohn's disease, which is the other form of inflammatory bowel disease, has always been thought to be a severe progressive disease. Ulcerative colitis may be a minor disease, but this we know is not true. And through our study, we are trying to establish that ulcerative colitis has just as much burden of disease. Uh, even our early data, before what we showed today, suggests that patients are very often fatigued, they are very often depressed because of their chronic disease. And once the study is completed, we hope to show how big the burden of disease is, how much effect it has on lives of people, and as you said, it often affects young people. There's nothing worse in a young people to have to go to the washroom all the time, have a disease they can't talk to with their friends and other people. It prevents them from holding their job or their education, and the impact is massive as a result of that. And we want to show that. And we are designing some new tools to show that, which are innovative and hasn't been tried before. And once we have those tools tried out in this study, maybe we can show it more simply. Are you referring to telemedicine tools that um, patients can use themselves? Or what tools are you referring to? So some of the tools are indeed telemedicine. Uh, in our hospital, we have a patient portal. They can log on to it, they can see their results, they can talk to the doctors, everything. But the tools I'm talking about 
are uh, different kinds. So one of them is uh, called PRISM, which is being tried in Iconic, which shows that if this is your normal life, like you put it down on paper, and how far away are you, and in what direction, and just doing that tells everybody uh, how far away they are from normal life. And this is being validated in other diseases, amazingly. So this works. We also have something called an IBD disc, which takes 10 elements of disability, not just diarrhea and pain, which are obvious, but also things like um, sleep, emotion, depression, joint pain, which are not usually looked at. And they just mark it, and if this circle around these points becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, then they are getting better and better and better. And those are the things we are trying. You just mentioned fatigue and uh, depression. Is fatigue re always related to depression? Or um, are there signs of fatigue without the patients actually showing signs of actual depression? Uh, you ask a very nice question. Uh, fatigue and depression can be linked, but they can also be separate. Um, so um, a central fatigue can often be due to depression. But there are also patients who are fatigued just because of the inflammatory molecules generated from the gut inflammation and their fatigue as a result of that. There are also patients fatigued because of some of the drugs they use, for example, thiopurine drugs, which makes you fatigued. And we often become satisfied that patients' inflammation is better because of thiopurine. But the patients say, but I feel so tired. So, you know, their burden hasn't improved, their inflammation has improved. There's a lot of interest, therefore, in studying fatigue. So there's, um, obviously, the research needs to go into or the, to the direction of therapy, also uh, creating a non-fatigue status while curing the inflammations. Oh, you are totally right. So our purpose out of all this is to bring a patient back to leading a normal life. Normal for that person. Uh, not everybody's normal is the same, but whatever that person wants to do, they can do it normally. That's our ultimate goal. So fatigue is incompatible with a normal life, and there are many other things that are also incompatible. So our aim is treat the whole person, make the person go to normal. We think that getting their intestines healed is a big step towards making them normal, but this is not the only step to making them normal. And one last question. Do you think that the uh, research um, and the, the status of um, treating the patients will make a big step within the next years? So. Already in the last five to six years, um, we have made some very major changes progress towards getting better. But I think for the next five, certainly within the next 10 years, but most probably within the next five years, we'll become better. Not just because there'll be new drugs, but also because we'll learn how to target or place a specific drug to fit the profile of a specific patient to give the maximum benefit. So that is what is the precision medicine or personalized medicine. And this is coming in a very big way to inflammatory bowel disease, including ulcerative colitis. Professor Gosh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.